President Trump, in one of his press conferences um, on COVID-19, went after globalists. So this was an interesting shot. Let's take a look. It's underscored the vital importance of reshoring our supply chains and bringing them back into the United States, where they belong, where they should have never left. What happens if you're in a war and you have a supply chain where half of your supplies are given to you by other countries? Who are, who are the people that thought of this? These are globalists. It doesn't work. It certainly doesn't work during rough times, bad times, or dangerous times. I've said this a thousand times, and I'll say it a thousand more. I wish that Trump and the Republicans and the Democrats could get together and agree that we got to fix these supply chains and we have to start manufacturing more here at home. We have to do that as a matter of necessity, as a matter of necessity. We're dependent on a nation that we kind of have hostile relations with. So that seems really stupid. So I wish they would fix the supply chains, but they're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. You have arguments from a right wing perspective and a left wing perspective to bring the supply chains home and they're not going to do it. The left wing perspective is I care about American workers. So let's get American workers good paying jobs. Let's start manufacturing more stuff here. That's the left wing argument. The right wing argument is Trump's kind of alluding to it there. It's a nationalistic argument of, you know, I'm all about made in America, man. And, and you know, why are we dependent on foreign countries that uh, kind of take away our sovereignty by, they take away our sovereignty in a roundabout way by us being so reliant on them. So that's like a right-wing argument for it, a nationalistic argument for it. So, there, I mean, there's obvious reasons the right and the left can agree. The only people who really disagree are the hardcore libertarians and silly Democrats. But that could... That gets into why I'm actually covering this story. So everybody knows I want to bring the supply chains back here. I would love that. I'd love that. I think we should trade as a matter of necessity, not, you know, willy-nilly to pad the bottom line for profits for multinational corporations. We should trade as a matter of necessity, but as much as we can produce here, we should produce here. But here's what's happening. So Democrats will listen to what Trump said there, and you know what they'll do. Because we've seen this before. We've seen this in the past. They'll say, oh my God, Trump just attacked the globalists. Trump hates globalism. He loves nationalism. If he loves nationalism, if he's praising the word nationalism, well, that he's like admitting he's a white nationalist. When you say the word nationalism, white goes with it all the time. So it's, he's a white nationalist. So they attack him for attacking globalism because the idea is, the argument is, globalism is, is, is tolerance. Globalism is tolerance and it's world cooperation. And we're all in favor of tolerance and world cooperation. So how could you be against globalism? This is what, you know, the establishment minded neoliberal Democrats will say. This is their argument. They, they literally get offended when he attacks globalists. They do. And, and listen, it is true that you have people like Alex Jones and that kind of flavor and variety of commentator who they view like the globalists as like the New World Order Illuminati and these are the people who secretly control everything and, and they're evil. And so there is a little bit of right-wing conspiracy stuff mixed in with a term like that, but generally speaking, the argument that you're going to get from a bunch of partisan Democrats is... He's attacking globalism because he's a nationalist. He's really a white nationalist, so it's racist because globalism is just tolerance and cooperation with the world, and we all support tolerance and cooperation with the world. So that's what the partisan Democrats say. Now, there are a lot of Republicans, a lot of Republicans, never Trump Republicans, and even your run-of-the-mill establishment Republicans. What do they say in response to Trump here? They say, oh, but Don, you don't get it. Free trade gives us cheap goods and free trade is always the way to go. So you, you're attacking something you don't really understand. These market forces are beyond our control. You can't have the government try to regulate that or control that. So therefore you're wrong to attack the globalists because this is the way the market works and this is what's most efficient. And we get cheap consumer goods as a result of these trade deals. And as a result of the supply lines going back to China, so there's nothing wrong with that. 
And the dirty little secret is that these partisan Democrats and these establishment Republicans, the real reason why they're making these arguments is not necessarily because they believe it, although some of them may believe it, but it's because they're corrupt and they're bought by the industries that are making more money because the supply lines go to China. So, in other words, the position that I have, there's, there's a whole group of conservatives called paleoconservatives. One of the issues that they more agree with the left on, uh, it's trade. So, there's a bunch of paleocons and there's a bunch of people like me on populist left who agree on this issue, who agree, yes, let's have the supply lines come here, let's create more jobs here, let's do a lot of manufacturing here as a matter of necessity and as a matter of for our economy, it'd be wonderful for our economy. Sure, you may have the price of consumer goods go up a little bit, but you know what the trade-off is? You get a lot of Americans with a lot of good-paying jobs, and we're more self-sufficient. That seems like a trade-off I'm willing to make. But we're never going to get the paleocons and the populist left people are never going to win. And we're never going to win because of all the big money corrupting politics. So they're never going to say, let's have our supply line, change our supply lines and be more reliant on ourselves. They're never going to do that because they're making more money by having stuff made in Chinese damn near slave factories. So that's where we are, guys. That's where we are. And tr what Trump's saying here is true. Um, he's right that we got to bring it back here, but don't even get it twisted because he's not even going to do it. Like he's act he talks a good game on some trade stuff. He never does the actual steps he could do to, to fix that. Just so everybody understands, Trump could with one executive order, massively increase U.S. manufacturing. There's an executive order. It's the Buy American Executive Order. Right now, the federal government says everything that we buy for the federal government has to be from the U.S. But there's a little asterisk, and the asterisk is, and all of our allies are included in that too. So in other words, you could buy from China, you could buy from Israel, you could buy from any of our allies, and that counts as made in America. But it's not made in America. So what Trump could do is no... I'm going to sign an executive order that really mandates whatever we buy has to be made here at home. That would overnight massively increase U.S. manufacturing. He hasn't signed that executive order. You want to know why? He also has sold out to these same industries. So he could do all this talk against globalism that he wants. He's not changing Dickie McGee's acts. He's not changing Dickie McGee's acts. He could punish outsourcers with an executive order. That's all it takes. I'm going to sign an executive order, punish all the outsourcers. No federal contracts for anybody who outsources jobs. He could do that. He hasn't done it. Why? Because he doesn't want to do it. Why? Because it's all a mirage. It's all a game. It's all like, I'm going to pretend like I'm, you know, strong on manufacturing in the U.S. And then he doesn't. 93,000 jobs were outsourced in his first year as president. He didn't put a stop to any of that stuff. So I'm telling you, man, we do need to bring the supply lines back here, but they haven't done it and they're not going to do it. And it's a shame.